Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's magnify God on the day. Let's go ahead and worship God because he is a splendor of a king. We magnify you, God, O Shatra Son of God. We worship you, Lord, O Bishara Han of God. Let's worship God wherever you are. O Sikara Son of God, how we magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I'm your host, Pastor Alyssa Narvez, and this is the Wednesday night prophetic revelation. Oh, Basha Tarobaya, God, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, how we lift you up, God. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. God wants you to worship him on the day. Let's worship God together. Oh, Shatara, Son of God. Oh, how we magnify your name, God. Oh, how we glorify your name, God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you on a day, God. We just want to bless and magnify your name on a day, God. Oh, we thank you for moving by your spirit, Heavenly Father. We thank you for moving by your glory, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all things, oh, Father God. We thank you that all things are under your feet, God. And because they're under your feet, King Jesus, they're under our feet, God. All the listeners and viewers out there and listening land on a day, God. You have them in the palm of your hand, God. Oh, how we magnify your name, God. We ask that you go with the people, oh, Father God. We ask that you move by your glory, God. Move on the situation, God. Move, Jesus, by your spirit, God. Oh, move, God, by your glory, God. Oh, move, God, by your love, God. Oh, move on that situation, God. Move on the hearts, God, the hearts that are heavy, God. Those that feel as though they have no might, God. Move by your glory, God. Oh, move on every situation, every broken vessel on the night, God. Every broken vessel, every broken mind, hallelujah, God. Touch and deliver even right Right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, send a hyper release of healing, God. Oh, move by your glory, God. Oh, we pray for the inner body of the soul of the being, God. Oh, touch and heal even right now, God. You all know that's all that's going on inside of the body, God. Oh, heal, God. Heal diabetes, God. Heal cancer, God. Heal depression, God. Heal low self-esteem, God. Oh, heal, God. Heal spinal injury on a day, God. Oh, heal paralysis on a day, God. Oh, heal the feet and the bones and the vessels, Heavenly Father, God. All the things that make people walk physically and spiritually, God. Heal right now, God. Oh, heal by your spirit, God. Oh, heal the back even right now, God. Every spirit of infirmity, remove it, God. Oh, Bashata Sana, God. Oh, I lift your name up, God. On behalf of the people, God. Oh, they lift you up, God. Oh, how we bless and magnify your name on a day, God. We give you the splendor of the glory because you are truly the splendor of a king. Hallelujah and amen. You know, God has something very special, hallelujah, in store for you. And I'm just so excited because my day today was filled with so much activity. Amen. I have a young daughter who is five that turned six on six years old on a day. So her birthday was today. Amen. And I mean to tell you, hallelujah, God just made everything come together. Hallelujah. There were some things that, hallelujah, God, that I was waiting for, amen, in order to make her day special. And I mean to tell you that God came in the last minute of the last second of the last hour, men and women out there. You know, we serve a God that is always on time. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, our timing is not like God's timing. And because of today, because God made that day so special for my family, for myself and my daughter, hallelujah, Kennedy, bless her sweetheart. Hallelujah, God, I'm just thankful on today. And I feel as though God wants to minister to a word to you on today about Thanksgiving. Hallelujah, God, and he's taking me to the book of Ecclesiastes, amen, and I'm going to the seventh chapter on the day, hallelujah, God, and I'm going to begin reading at the first verse, amen, you know, there is a blessing found inside of thanksgiving, amen, God wants us to humble our hearts and be thankful unto him, amen, he said to thank him for all things, amen, for the moon, the stars, the trees, we are to thank God. We are to thank God for our health and our being and our strength. Amen. Every day is a day that's full of 
thanksgiving. Amen. God said in his word that we ought to have melody in our heart and sing songs, songs of praise and hymns of thanksgiving. Amen. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Amen. And we've got our Bible here. Amen. The King James Version, amen, is what I go by. Amen. It is my Bible of choice, my Bible of preference. Amen. And so Ecclesiastes goes to read. Amen. A good name is better than precious ointment. Hallelujah, God. What is God saying with this scripture? Amen. God is saying that every name, amen, that the enemy doesn't call you, amen, is a good name. Amen. For we know that the enemy calls us nothing but bad names. Amen. And God is saying that what the enemy doesn't call you is good as ointment. Amen. What were some of the things that were done with precious ointment? Amen. Well, we know in the Bible that the woman, hallelujah, God, with the alabaster box, wiped Christ's feet, amen, with a special ointment, amen, that was found inside of that box. Hallelujah, God, Jesus, a good name is better than precious ointment. Why? Because it can be sold. Hallelujah, God, precious ointment was able to be sold, amen, and so a good name is something that brings you wealth, amen. You want to hold on to the name that God has given you. God says, to not allow, hallelujah, God, your good to be spoken evil of. Amen. And so God wants us to place ourselves in situations where, hallelujah, we're protecting our name. Amen. Our name is the fact that we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. If we're protecting the name of us, then we should be protecting the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, God, because the Bible says that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of the word of our testimony. And because of this, amen, the word of God is as precious ointment, amen, that flowed down the beard, hallelujah, of Aaron. The Bible goes on to say, and in the day of death, then the day of one's birth, hallelujah, God, Jesus. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thanksgiving. This scripture is saying when we can find a place of thanksgiving, it will give us the peace that we need in times of turmoil, in times of sadness, in times of challenges. Amen. We're all challenged in life. Amen. I have faced, definitely have faced my challenges. Amen. And I'm sure that some of you are out there facing your challenges also. But the scripture says sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Amen. And so when we are thankful, hallelujah, God, Jesus, God makes us feel a whole lot better. Amen. This is why, hallelujah, I feel a prophetic revelation. This is why we are to give, amen, a spirit of thanksgiving because it gives us, hey, amen, a garment of praise, amen. It gives us, uh, it gives us joy. It gives us peace, amen. This is why we put on a garment of praise when our spirits are heavy. Hallelujah, God. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Amen. And God is saying in the scripture to find wisdom in all the things that you do. Amen. For when you find wisdom, amen, you will find thanksgiving. For it's hard to be thankful over things that are not wise. Amen. God sends us wise things. To, to, to make us say thanks, amen, to give him the glory, to give him the praise, amen, for it is a fool that does not, amen, give God all the thanksgiving, hallelujah, what is God saying, God is saying that there's a cause and, a, and an effect, amen, because you give thanks to God, the effect is, is that you feel joy and peace, amen, Jesus Christ says, joy and peace that I give to you, the world cannot take it away, Amen. It is not theirs to take away. And because you're able to give thanksgiving, it fulfills you with a sense of joy and peace. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. 
Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. God desires for us to be in a place of patience. Amen. Hallelujah, God. For we heard in the scripture, it says, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Why is it important to be patient? Amen. Because in being patient, you can stop to smell the roses. You can have a sense of thanksgiving. Amen. Patience brings about virtue. And virtue brings about wisdom. Amen. And they all yield the peaceable fruit. Amen. This is why God, amen, suggests that it is better to be patient in spirit than to be proud in spirit. He says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Say not thou that is the, is the cause that the former days were better than these. For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. You know, yesterday had its day. Yesterday had its place. We're not going back to yesterday anymore. Amen. We are here. This is a new day, a new time, a new place, a new reason to be thankful. Amen. God is saying in this last day, amen, he's saying to live for today. Don't live for what happened yesterday. For yesterday is gone and you can never bring it back. A lot of people carry a lot of doubt and condemnation because they're still in the mindset of yesterday. Amen. What happened last year? What happened five years ago? What happened ten years ago? But in but 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 God is saying that we ought to give him thanks for today. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Bible goes on to say, wisdom is good. With an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a de defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Amen. God is saying that the wealthy become wealthy through the word of wisdom. Amen. For hallelujah, God, you can, amen, start something. But, hallelujah, God, it takes the wisdom of God to keep it. Hallelujah. If you've ever heard of people getting a large lump sum of money and then they turn around five or ten years later and, amen, they're destitute and they're out on their luck. Amen. It's because with the wisdom of God was not applied. Amen. And I'm not talking, this, this scripture is not talking about a, a carnal wisdom, but this is a supernatural wisdom. Amen. The beginning to know God is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible declares in Proverbs. Hallelujah, God, Jesus. And when we get to know God, oh, we get to know the supernatural wisdom that God carries. Amen. This is the wisdom that gives us the knowledge to get wealth. Amen. The Bible declares, amen, that God giveth the knowledge to gain wealth, to get wealth, to keep wealth, to have wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's done through thoughts and ideas and, and open doors. Amen. Thinking of things that no one has ever thought of before. Hallelujah, God. God will give you a wisdom. Amen. And he'll give you, hallelujah, God, an originality that no one else has ever done it before. No one else has ever thought of the idea before. Amen. Who would have ever thought that it would have been so successful for a company to start a business based on selling coffee? Oh, come on and help me, God, on this. You know, now we have a movement of coffee. Everybody is in the coffee business because they see a wisdom that was there. Hallelujah, God, Jesus. There are so many innovative things that God can give us ideas for if we would just simply get close to Jesus Christ. He is a wealth of wisdom. Oh, basha tasana, God. The Bible goes to read in, hallelujah, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. In the 13th verse, consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? You know, if God be for you, no man can stand against you. No man can stand against the wisdom that God has given you. And I feel as though God is giving some people wisdom out there. He said that he's giving people the wisdom that they need to get wealth. Hallelujah, God, Jesus. If it means being closer to him, to hear what thus say of God on every day, all day, half a day, some of the day, in the night, in the daytime, in the noontime. Oh, Bashatasan, God is giving individuals the knowledge and the wisdom to get wealth. 
Hallelujah, God, Jesus, well comes by wisdom. Oh, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. God also has set the one over against the other. And to the end, that man should find nothing after him. Oh, Bashata Son of God. I want to go to Scripture 14. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7, the 7th chapter and the 14th verse. In the day of prosperity. What is this prosperity that the Bible is speaking of? There's prosperity in our lives. Amen. There is a financial prosperity. Amen. There's a spiritual prosperity. Amen. There's a hopeful prosperity. Amen. And then there is the prosperity of God. Amen. And so it's saying in the day of prosperity. Prosperity means to get wealth, to, to gain. Amen. Prosperity means to take an advantage of. Amen. To get, get ahead, full speed ahead. And God is saying in the day of that. In the day of your gain, in the day of your wealth, amen. In the day of the day of, sp of spiritual gain of wealth, spiritual wealth. In the day of prosperity or spiritual wealth, be joyful. God wants you to make a joyful noise unto Him. He said, "Make a joyful noise unto Me, all ye lands. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and praise." Hallelujah, God Jesus. We just want to praise God and magnify him and lift him up because this is the thing that leads to wisdom. This is the thing that leads to, to knowledge. This is the thing that leads to joy. The Bible goes on to say, God also has set one another, one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. The last scripture goes to read, all things have I seen. In the days of my vanity, there is just a man that perishes in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wicked house. We know, I believe that God sent me by to let you know on a day. I know that it's just a Wednesday on a day. But when you get this message down in your spirit, you may be listening to it on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But God is speaking the word today on a Wednesday. A Wednesday night to be exact. And God sent me by to let you know on a day that there is a such thing called the prosperity gospel. And God is saying that we have the ability to advance. We have the ability to advance in his wisdom. We have the ability to advance in his, in his knowledge. We have the ability to advance in his wisdom. God sent me by to let you know on the night um, that you do not have to be down and out. Um, that you can prosper on every hand. Um, that you can have all that you need. Um, you can have a spiritual prosperity. You can have a financial prosperity. You can have an advancement of the mind in the older age that led to prosperity. Oh, help me God on the day. God is saying just because you are in your midst life. Um, uh, some people call it a midlife. Oh, but God is saying even if you're in your midlife, there's still enough time for you to have what is called this prosperity gospel. Oh, my shot, my son of God. Uh, for this is what Solomon spoke about. Uh, Solomon spoke and preached about the prosperity gospel. And Solomon said that there is another way. Uh, Solomon said that there's nothing new up under the sun. Uh, Solomon Solomon said that God gave him all the knowledge and the wisdom. For one day, God went to Solomon and he said, Solomon, uh, ask me what thou wanteth of me. Uh, and Solomon said, um, give me the wisdom to lead your people. See, God is looking to bless you in the prosperity gospel when you don't ask for prosperity. God is looking to bless you uh, in the prosperity gospel when you don't have your hand out expecting finances. Uh, money, houses, and cars. Uh, but when you have a desire to get in front of the presence of the true and living God, uh, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, when you have a desire to get in front of the comforter, I said when you have a desire to get in front of uh, the rock of Judah, oh, rock is God on a day. Uh, when you have a desire to get in front of, uh, oh, Jehovah, 
He'll be more than your provider. He'll be your wealth of prosperity gospel. See, you don't have to run after riches and gold. God has all the riches and gold. If you would draw nigh unto him, God said to chase after him with all your heart. God said to run after righteousness and then these things will follow. If you have a desire to get in front of God, the prosperity gospel will follow you. See, what we have to understand is a lot of people preach about the prosperity gospel and I hear a lot of oh, Bashata, Sana, negative comments about the prosperity gospel but it said it right here in the word if we followed after God the prosperity would chase after us. See the prosperity gospel is something that you do not have to run after. It will find you for God sent me money on the day. Uh, money that I needed for my daughter to make her day a very special day and it came right in the nick of time this is the type of God that we serve. God has God has God knows what we have need of before we even ask. This is why He says, "Don't beg like a vagabond." I already have know that you have a need of. I know you have a need to pay the light bill. I know you have a need to pay the car payment. I know you have a need to pay the mortgage. I know you have a need for a, 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 a low interest loan. I know that you have a need, oh my son, my son of God, to pay off your school credit. I know that you have a need, oh my son, my son of God, to get rid of the bills. See, God knows what we have a need of. He knows everything about us. He says that our hairs are numbered. So why wouldn't God know what we need in our bank accounts? Why wouldn't God know what we need concerning the prosperity gospel? Why wouldn't God know that the prosperity gospel will find us when we follow him? And this is the wisdom that God is teaching on today. God is showing that in thanksgiving, God will send you everything that you need, but have a spirit of thanksgiving. Have a spirit of expectancy. Expectancy that, hallelujah, because you praise and worship God, he's going to reward you because he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And God sent me by to let you know on a day that you do not have to worry about the bills because he is taking care of the bills and he's taking care of you. I've been your host, Pastor Alyssa Narvez. I do have a book that is available. It's called 30 Days of Dreams and Visions. You can get the book at Amazon.com. You can also get the book on the website, AlyssaNarvez.com. Hallelujah, God Jesus. This is a CD called Understanding Revelations. Please get it. You've got to get this CD. It is phenomenal. There are six CDs in the, in the set. Amen. Volume 1 through 6. Volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And God took, I took the scriptures of Revelation, and God broke them down. It was not my word, but it was God's word. Amen. You can get this CD. Amen. I think the price for this CD for the set is $49, um, something to that effect, $49, um, something around there. Amen. It is over a, a, a $300 value. Amen. You're not going to find this out there. Amen. In, in this, this low price. Amen. So please get the Understanding Revelation CD. Amen. And I've been your host. Listen, prosperity will find you when you follow God. May the grace of God be with you and God bless and keep you. Remember, tell someone about Jesus because he is Lord and he is the Savior of us all. God bless you. Bye-bye.